This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. I'm a massive, massive hormonal Dodgers fan. So. <laughs> I felt like I could just be real. I could just be myself. People accepted me for who I was. We're going to make it through no matter what. I just, I want to be thriving in marriage. And sometimes I feel like we're in survival mode. It was serious, debilitating, dangerous clinical depression. Most difficult challenge facing the church. The idol of the ring of power. Consumerism mentality. Whoa. <laughs> you drive me crazy. Yeah, you just found the you drive me crazy part right now. It's maybe one of the moments, yeah. We'll edit this out. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 248. Boys, how's it going? Who are you going to? Name a boy. What do you mean, how? Well, <laughs> how you doing, Andy? Have you tried restarting your router? <laughs> All the time. We got some fun guests. Jeff, how you doing? That's nice. I am fantastic. <laughs> we are all over the place. Wow. What do you mean, boys? Welcome, <laughs> fans and listeners to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. We are a podcast that talks about faith and culture seriously without taking ourselves too seriously. Serious conversations about faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. I am Andy McCraw, Hi, joined Andy. by my good friends, Zach Crater. Hello. Jeff Pearson on the ones and twos today. Yes. He's filling in. We've got the producer cam. Jeff, how are you feeling being behind the board for a uh, fill in? I'm getting jittery. <laughs> I'm jittered. I'm very jittered. I, I My hands are shaking. I feel a great <laughs> responsibility. I just, <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, okay, I, I can do this. Do you feel like you've got a uh, renewed respect for what it takes to be a producer? Yes, and I I kind of enjoy this. I I, I mean for the moment, um, but yes, great yeah, respect we'll see how for the people who out. do this. Yes. <laughs> anyway, thanks for filling in. Okay, you, uh, we kind of uh, gave it away a little bit because we've obviously have a couple of uh, our good friends here as well, Art and Brenda Greco. Woohoo! So good to see you guys. Welcome to the pod. Uh, I and be, we can actually be seen now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's right. Previously, you've only been on audio versions of the podcast. Yeah. And so, so now, I know, like all of us, we're finding ourselves making sure that we're all sorted out here <laughs> visually. <laughs> uh, can, can you guys give us um, the elevator pitch for who you are and who you were and who you are now? Kind of a thing, just a brief. You just know, so I, people I was gonna, that, I was gonna do that in the uh, the oh, rapid okay. fire, but you know, right. it's no, well, I mean, it's, you know what? It, then strike that. We'll edit that out. I just want to thank a couple new subscribers real quick. Then we'll get to Jeff handling the uh, rapid fire. We got Art Schneider, Sean Tussler, Lincoln Baker, Stephen Lloyd, and Robert Grant. A lot of dudes. Maybe, maybe Sean's a, a lady. That's true. We do get about it's about twenty five, twenty seven percent. Uh, female audience, which is nice. Well, wake like that. Yeah, welcome, new subscribers. We're really glad that you're able to uh, join us, and we hope that uh, you like, subscribe, comment, all those lovely things. It does help the channel grow. So, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please press like and subscribe. We actually have looked into the the stats, and most of our viewers, the majority of them, aren't subscribed yet. So that means you have a chance that you're missing some of this extra content. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, <laughs> and then. You'll get to hear all of this lovely content and see it as well. Make it so, number two. All right, Jeff. Yes. What do you got? What do you got? Okay, so Art and Brenda, I've, we've got rapid fire. Are you are you ready? Sure. Ready. Okay. Now some of these are some of these are for Brenda. Some of them are for Art. Some of them are for both of you. Okay. Uh, but you know, it's going to start off light, and then you know we're going to get into the weeds. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Art, best ML pitcher in the game today. Kershaw. Uh, Nicaragua or Alaska, either of you? Nicaragua. Alaska. Sh <laughs> Sh Sh Chevron or Tesla? What the heck is Chevron? Chevron. The gas mean, station? The gas station. <laughs> or a Tesla. That's not a car? <laughs> you, mean, you mean gas or electric? Oh, gas or electric. <laughs> I drive yeah, a hybrid. Hybrid, yeah. I drive a Ford Chevron. <laughs> uh, Padres or Dodgers? Don't make me Dodgers. throw up. This is Dodgers all the way. Yeah, baby. Do they do they really have a chance? No. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any pitching. Uh, wait, the Dodgers don't. Dodgers don't have any pitching. Oh, They're all injured. An honest fan. Okay. What if Shohei shows up on the mound? Oh, that would be the worst decision ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Put him at risk. Yeah, that's true. 
Okay, Beatles, Stones, or Hendrix? Ooh. Beatles. Beatles covering Hendrix. Oh! oh. <laughs> I like that. That's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> you are. ZZ Top. That's my. That's, uh, that's true. That's he true. is a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Brenda, yeah. this question is for you. When Art was young, he was blank, but now he's blank. Hmm. When Art was young, he was blank, but now he's blank. I like Gosh, this one. But he hasn't lost anything. <laughs> um, hmm. You're supposed to be telling the I truth. Know. <laughs> <laughs> he was blank. He was... Uh, he was... <laughs> bold. I told you. Now getting? he's bolder. <laughs> he was bold, and now he... It's too bad you have lost older. Lost if you lost a lot of hair, she could have said you were bold and now you're bald. Bolder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Art. If if your wife you would equate her to a fruit, what fruit would that be? Oh, really sweet apple. Mm, I love it. Um, if there I'm was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what? He the, said he's hungry. The way you said that, I'm hungry. Oh, yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. If if there was one word to describe the glue to marriage, it would be, and this is for both of you. Respect. Faith. Oh, you always have to outdo me. <laughs> That's outdoing you? Maybe we can unpack that <laughs> a little bit later. Christian answer. Yes. Maybe we'll unpack that one. Competition is the key to a good marriage. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Competition and one upsmanship. Winning. <laughs> okay. Most difficult challenge today facing marriage. Their marriage or marriage in general? Uh, marriage in general. Mm. What do you think? Sorry. That's a good one. We'll get into their marriage. Culture. Mm. Culture. Like yogurt? Yeah. <laughs> My wife yeah. picks crappy yogurt. I cannot handle it anymore. <laughs> okay, let me. How about facing facing the church? Most difficult challenge facing the church. This is for anybody. Ooh, oh, I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. I wasn't told I'd be in on this. You guys are also in on this right when now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. most difficult challenge facing church. Yes. Um, the idol of the ring of power. The idol of the ring of power. <laughs> <laughs> you should. No, you, that's what I was going to say. An over <laughs> indul- uh, Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the word? You Didn't, know the thing. You yeah. Know the word. Needing political power too much. Yeah. All right. I, I will give a slight variation, which is a uh, uh, consumerism mentality. I'm, that's a I'm, good one, too. I'm here to go to church to get what I want and what I, I'm supposed to have out of church. Okay, forty years ago, if I, forty what, 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 are we done with that question? Oh, church, go ahead. It was rapid. It was rapid fire. That was too rapid. Be rapid. Get the fire. <laughs> go. Right. I think it's just, it's a very. It, I agree, but I would say it's just a complete loss of mission. Mission focus. The church has forgotten mm-hmm. what she's about. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, those I don't are examples. Like that. Those are examples of. Yeah, well, that's why you were a professional Christian, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 40 years ago, I was blank, but now I'm blank. 40 years 40 ago, years I was ago. blank, but now I'm blank. 40 years ago, I'm 30, but now I'm 70. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's a very on the uh, it's a very on the surface question <laughs> or, Forty years or ago, answer. I was insecure, and now I'm a little bit less insecure. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I could sit down with my younger self, I would say, "Don't worry about this." That's a good question. Yeah, Jeffrey's <sighs> questions are really good today. Go ahead, huh? Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't. I don't, okay, re- I don't really recall. I don't really recall worrying that much. Some of these are hard, though. <laughs> she didn't worry that much. Yeah, I would say about don't worry about always being right. Mm. I like it. I like it. Be tender instead. Okay, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire moment. You complete me. How does your spouse complete you in one word or statement? 
<clears throat> he is. Oh, a statement. Yeah, you could do a statement. And make sure you Strong. get on that. Get on that Passion. mic. Get on that mic, Brenda. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah we gotta Strong, use it. passionate. Yeah, and she helps me be a better Christian. So I can be an idiot. Oh, okay, we'll talk about the her, we'll, her, her common phrase is, Greg, be nice. <laughs> Calm down. Be nice. I love it. Jeff, will you check your camera real quick? I heard it beep. All right. Yeah, we're going. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that is the end of the rapid fire. All right. Congratulations. I'll have to put a bed of music under that or something. Yeah. We made it. That was a roller coaster ride for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't quite rapid all right uh-huh. a lot of fire uh, i'm not good at rapid fire so. art and brenda mm-hmm. thank you for being here i think it'd be great art though you've been on the podcast before um we get new listeners and new viewers every time and brenda you've obviously not been on the podcast before so like zach was saying a, a little elevator pitch so people can know who you are and a little bit of your history and kind of place the context of as we have our conversations today okay. tell us who you are Greg. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's see. Um, gr- whoop, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up in Sacramento, met Art, be- um, became a Christian at age 21. We got married nine months after we met. Um, been married 47 years almost, three grown kids in their 40s. And uh, I was business... Married. I did business for a bunch of years and then went what, back to school. What business? Um, I did telephone company. I worked in a dentist office. I ran a church office and then went back to school and got my nursing degree. Mm. So, and then mostly did postpartum nursing. And um, now I'm grandma and mother in law and mom and whatever. What was your favorite of all the jobs? Of all the jobs, grandma. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might say that. <laughs> Yep, it's the best. Yep. Yeah, the yeah. other jobs paid you, and <laughs> Grandma cost you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, Art. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little about about yourself. Well, the way we all met, yep, was that I was an interim pastor at uh, your church for a month mm-hmm. or for four months for a summer, and and uh, great four months. I went there thinking, oh, let's go see if we can help, and it turned out to be a gift to us, a deep <laughs> gift to us including these friendships. Yeah. So and I've been a pastor for four, I was a pastor 46 years. Now I do a little bit of coaching and um, from Santa Clara. So we're both California kids. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know what else to say too much. I'm a massive, massive hormonal Dodgers fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so I walk a around hormonal. with hard every year. A hormonal you know? Dodgers? Wait, what are you hormonal? <laughs> That's redundant, isn't it? <laughs> All Dodgers fans are hormonal. I mean, I'm the kind of Dodgers fan when when they lose a game, I get really frustrated and I throw uh, pillows against the wall. But when they lose to the Giants, I throw lamps against. The oh wall, yeah, you know, well that's fair. I hate the Giants. Yeah, it's tough buying all those lamps. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough buying all those lamps. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It, it's been a frustrating postseason the last oh, 10 gosh. years. <clears throat> yeah. So one of the things that you do now, Art, in in retirement is you, you did it for us, the interim role, where you get to step in and and often it's a, it's well, not often, it's always a church that's in transition, right? Mm-hmm. That they're, they don't have a pastor right now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. obviously they, they need some help. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious. Like I know uh, what our experience was of being able to have you step in there, but you've done this more than once. Uh, what are some of the things that you typically see that uh, when you step into that role that are like, hey, the the church needs help in these areas, and most places, may, and if there's a commonality, hey, most most churches that I step into to help, they all have this problem, and and. And, and how are you able to help with those things? Well, the one thing they all have is some version of dis- relational dysfunction, obviously. Nobody's surprised by that. Usually it's between, it's in a broken staff, uh, uh, some, some let down there. And so what, I, what I've found that uh, I have some success at 
is helping people rethink those relationships and see things differently and come back together, try to be a little more unified. Um, there's always some sort of relational brokenness, which again is no surprise. That's what causes yeah. the dysfunction. Um, I prefer to go places that have more critical dysfunction. It's more complex. It's a little less likely to be healed up. I just like that, that challenge, but it does wear, wear on you after, after a while. In some ways, is there less pressure in that situation when it's mm-hmm. so bad? Oh yeah. Where it's like, if, if it's obviously fixable, you might think like, okay, this might be on me if I can't write this ship. You nailed it. <laughs> That's, I know in the back of my mind, I think, why, did, why is that? And part of it is because it looks harder, but it's actually emotionally safer. And I tend toward, um, my insecurities really pop up uh, there when that, you know, when I'm in those, those situations. So yeah. it's mixed. Motives are mixed. Mm. Yeah. Has there been a, so Brenda, mm-hmm. has, has there, is there an example you can think to where he, he comes home and he's like, Oh, I don't know. This isn't happening. I can't fix this one. <laughs> um, he's come home with a lot. Yeah, I mean, just head in his hands, and what am I going to do? And but, but I mean, he's he's gifted. He's got rela- these relationship gifts that um, he's able to listen to people. He spends time listening, and um. And bring people back together, and people have confidence in him. And um, that's the difference between being forty and being seventy mm. as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say more about that. <laughs> you just calm down. Everybody knows it. You calm down when you get older, and you think yeah. this is what's important. This is what's not. And I don't need to have this success public and all that in order to feel good about myself i'll do the best i can if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't yeah and i don't need for it to be just yeah. i still want to be successful but because i want to help a church or help a person but are, are we we don't get to that point until we are 70 and that's, that's the, the problem that's the ch- isn't it right that's yeah that is a big problem yeah I that, mean, it, it's just the challenge of life, I guess. Yeah, I was just having a conversation with my girls about wanting to take, you know, whatever wisdom I have now. I, like, I was a terrible student. My parents, however long they live, it's they're going to live less as long because of what I did to them in high school. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, want, but that's not how life works. You you acquire wisdom through experience yeah. mm-hmm. and especially through great hardship uh, or, and sometimes great joys. But, and you can kind of, you can find little shortcuts if you're, if you have a higher than average emotional intelligence or you're, you're humble about things or you're curious. That's what I was saying is like, be curious. You're not, you want to feel right about things and justified about things, especially one of my girls. She it just likes to have everything complete and finished and it's all because of her so but it's one of those things where it's like you don't get to take that back because i i could have crushed it in high school going back then going back then with what i i know now um and i could oh, actually you mean like if you were in your mid-40s in high school right now <laughs> <laughs> dominate on the basketball yeah, court <laughs> yeah maybe not yeah actually <laughs> No, not these days. They hold Glory kids back days. a few years now, and the, <laughs> That's there's true. grown men in high school. These hey, there's days. old man game. I know how to do it. And old man strength is real. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, that's that's tough. And actually, I can I find that that can be sort of an idol for me is is being over nostalgic about well, I I could have gone, you know, what if what if I could have done better, and and then you lose mm-hmm. the things that are right in front of you that you can yeah. do now. Mm-hmm. When you were mentioning that, something that struck me was <clears throat> experience is helpful in figuring out, is this something that I'm going to care about in a week, in a month, in a year? But we're, we're so complicated, and I feel like there's all these other factors that go into what our reactions are in the moment, and if we're able to even have that kind of perspective, meaning like, how was my week? 
am I am I maxed out? Am, am I emotionally drained? Have the Dodgers hormonally drained me this week? And then and then what impact does that have on me being able to put into perspective whatever is going on? So I may have the experience. My head knowledge may be like, I know that in a month I'm not going to care about, about the fact that I injured my car yesterday. But I just came off of... thought you weren't talking about that. I'm not ready to talk about it. But after two months of like a lot of work and a lot of travel and sending my kid to uh, university, all of these things, I'm like, well, I don't have the emotional bandwidth to be okay with it and be like, It'll, it's fine. It's just not big. Instead, I'm like, I'm ready to break some lamps. Mm. <laughs> mm. To the yeah. listener, Andy does have a room just full of lamps. <laughs> yeah. So where he can, if he needs to vent. He yeah. Can vent. And pieces of lamps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At churches, they have the cry room. Mm. That's and right. And in my mm-hmm. house, we have the lamp room. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's good to wait, you know, and, and kind of let things settle down. And other times it's, you've missed opportunities. So you have to kind of yeah. find the, you know, the right Missed opportunities to break lamps? No, or missed to- <laughs> opportunities, you know, because you waited too long for something, because something something emotionally affected you or something in you, and um, so you you want to just let things settle, but then maybe it's too late to... to yeah. You're like stuffing I mean, it. Like you miss, you miss out on an opportunity or something because you held back. Yeah. Oh, like fear, <laughs> a fear emotion or of risk. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I don't know. I might not be able to do this. Okay, well, I'm overcome. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Then I would miss the opportunity to do a thing. Well, I know that I have in the past just, <clears throat> you know, I don't get anxious about stuff a lot. And then, um, but then I realized, you know, if I would have just jumped on this, I would have been able to do that. Yeah. And, um, but because I, I just relaxed too much, then I missed out. Yeah. I don't know if it's know. if it's similar, but it sounds like something. Just to turn it back to me, real quick, um, <laughs> I, I I can procrastinate with <clears throat> the best of them, mm-hmm. and that keeps you out of trouble because you don't make rash decisions, but you also don't take necessary risks to make things happen. That would be very rewarding, in like wh- whether it's relationally or like mm. I'm looking at you, Lisa. She had to ask me to kiss her like weeks into our relationship way back in the day. <laughs> Because I'm a world world class procrastinator, but yeah, I do that. And I'll you can, kiss her tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> it was probably more nerves than procrastination, but and not hormones. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I was as hormonal about that as Art is about the Dodgers, I've never kissed any of them, <laughs> but you would I kissed them goodbye sometimes. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, maybe you were already emotionally satisfied. This is probably right around when the Angels won their won the World Series. Oh man, two thousand two. Yeah, no, it was after that. But yeah, you're right. I was still my passion bucket was full from the Angels <laughs> winning the World Series. I was a big Angels fan for that oh. series. Yeah, so was I. Oh, who wasn't? I, I would have kissed Scott Spezio, Adam Kennedy, Troy Gloss. <laughs> Let's just go through them. Isn't that when they beat the Giants that year? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They were the wild That's card team. That's why I was a big angel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. Sports wise. Anyways. Well, Jeff. that's one of the reasons we click as a couple. I think, uh, and one of the ways we click as a couple is I'm very impatient. I want to get stuff done. Inefficiency is a button for me. I hate it. Yeah. Come on. That that was a one day job. We took five days to do it. That's a three minute decision. Why are we taking three hours to make it? And so often, Zach, I'll make I'll make a bad decision because I value just getting it done and behind me and let's move on over thinking through it. Brenda's much slower. She mm-hmm. rethinks things and rethinks things. So I frustrate her when I'm too compulsive. Uh, and she, she can sometimes frustrate me because she takes too long to make a decision. But the fact is there have been times when um, I've compensated for her and helped her not do what she just talked about. No, let's go. It was a good decision. Yeah. And we would still be thinking about it three days later and have missed the opportunity otherwise. And more often, there are times when she has said, hold on a second. What about this? What yeah. about that option? What about that? Or like I said earlier, calm down, be nice, relax. Yeah. Because I describe Brenda as wet wood. She's hard to ignite in that negative way. She She's a peacemaker type mm. and then brings a peaceful 
presence. And That's why I like calm her. Calm me down. Calm down. <laughs> you guys have seen it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not with us enough as couples. Yeah. Um, and our funny thing we talk about a lot, and I tell people this a lot when they ask us about marriage, is I tell her one day, you drive me absolutely crazy, and I can't stand to be away from you. And her response is, <laughs> this is where I cue you, we practice on that. <laughs> we, were, we rehearsed this. <laughs> You rehearsed this in the car responses. The you, never, dude, you never said that to me. <laughs> the, the, the listeners like, know we have a teleprompter for them, but it, Jeff, Jeff shut it off. Wait, this feels like the newlywed game where then they come out yeah, with the answers. No like, no. <laughs> Brenda's like, that sounds nice. I, I would love to hear That's that. That's like the question being, Art, what's your favorite team? And I say, oh, she's got this one. And she'll say, I don't know. I have no idea. What <laughs> no points. The response is, must be love. Must Remember be love. That? Yes, say you remember that. Yes, yeah, so sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. You, put, you, put you drive me room. crazy. Yeah. We're <laughs> illustrating the you drive me crazy part right now. This may be one of the moments, yeah. Oh, we're seeing it in real time. All right, you just mansplained to her, I think. <laughs> I what? You mansplained. You've never heard this Mansplain? before? Mansplain. 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 Oh, you mean like tell the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Tell it as it usually really is. I love Touché. it. Art, Art had no idea. He'd never heard that word before. Brenda's, Brenda's on the same page. Mansplained, honey. It's what you do. <laughs> oh, I just can't hear it. I thought you said man swing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> and this man don't swing. <laughs> That's in the uncensored. Only a golf club. You only swing a golf club. <laughs> Outside in. Yes. Unfortunately. Yeah, same. Yeah. But, yeah. So sometimes, I mean, art art encourages me to make a decision. We, we have to make this decision. And other times, I mean, I, I think I need to process it. I need to, and I don't want to be sorry for the, the decision that I made because I've made decisions in the past b- before I was ready and then you know, felt bad about it later or was disappointed and and then I couldn't undo what I'd done. So so I'm more careful about yeah. what, I don't want to make mistakes. Yeah. But that can lead to problems too. So you know the one thing that really stands out and we've seen you both in action and having conversations is the um the listening and also the pushback. You're both comfortable pushing back on each other and I like that's a that's a rare, rare thing. Yeah. I think, yeah, we've done it uncomfortably sometimes and regretted it and then have to kind of get things straightened out. We're good at that. We're so, good together. Yeah. It's 47 like, years, we've kind of got some things figured out. Yeah. It's like, I think, Andy, you mentioned the head and the heart. You you really need both. You need, I think, in your guys' case, heart, head, art, heart. Brenda head because often the heart you feel the passion and you mm-hmm. like we're gonna just we're gonna do this because this is what I feel needs to happen right now and sometimes when the head takes over it's like just wait a second sometimes that's the right move and sometimes it's not sometimes you have to act yeah yeah and sometimes I'm the heart and he's the head you know yeah. so mm. yeah I, I have passion for something want to do something he's now oh, wait a minute let's think about this I don't know we that might not. That, that might not there. be a good decision. <laughs> when you guys met, were, were you already past? You were pastor. I was a youth ministry intern. Kind of. I was on that track. Okay. So <clears throat> with hindsight being twenty twenty, Brenda, um, did you see like if you knew he was going to be full time pastor ministry, mm. would you have signed up? If you can put yourself back in that brain to do the time travel thing we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. would you have signed up for a pastor's wife? <laughs> well, actually, I was a pretty new Christian when we met, and just a few months. <clears throat> and then we dated for just a few months, and then got engaged. And then the next week, um, we were. it was a Wednesday evening church youth group night and his responsibility was walk around the parking lot make sure no kids you know are outside so i'm walking around this parking lot with them and i'm thinking wait a minute you're gonna be a pastor and uh you knew I, that I, and did you know that already is that that, that, you, that was your trajectory yeah. yeah look like it yeah yeah and 
and I'm this brand new Christian, you know, and I, I don't even play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> Which Wait, everyone is that, knows yeah, is a prerequisite. In the 70s. If you can be a Christian and you don't play the piano, are you even a Christian? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's debatable. How can I be a pastor's wife? I can't, Does I can't keyboard count? <laughs> no. <laughs> I said, I don't know what could be a pastor's wife. And then he said, he said, oh yeah, sure you can. I said, he said, it's easy. I said, it is. And he said, yeah. I'll be a pastor and you'll be my wife. And that will make you a pastor's wife. <laughs> Iron clad okay. well, logic. I'm not losing okay. this thing. i got to uh, figure a way out of this. <laughs> all right. But, yeah. But I was, I mean, as a, as a brand new Christian, we were in a great church and we had, I was being discipled and I was being, I mean, I was, it was like this sponge, you know, yeah. taking it all in and reading. and. But over the years, mm-hmm. I mean, so maybe part of, what I hear you saying in that moment is, I had no idea what I was getting into because how could I? Even if you'd been a Christian for a while, it's like I don't know. Right? You don't know what it's like to be a pastor. But wife. also, you know that early new Christian fervor that you have just about your this new faith. And wait, what? Jesus has been here all this time. And the honeymoon and, period. And, yeah. yeah and fire. and and then I realized one of my best friends from high school had grown up in this church, and I thought. Why didn't you share Jesus with me? <laughs> you know? mm, uh. I was like, anyway. So it was. I missed out on all this stuff all these times. Uh-huh. But- so then, over the years, mm-hmm. what has been some of the most difficult things about being married to a pastor? Hmm. And we actually don't record well, this part, so you can just speak freely. <laughs> oh, you guys, we'll edit this out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, really. Art, go ahead and just uh, earmuffs for a little while. Um, just, I probably his schedule has been, but I, I knew that going into it. And, you know, um, and at first he was a youth pastor, and so he was coaching football. He was doing different things to be with kids. Mm-hmm. So he's doing Young Life coaching football, youth group nights, um, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and I, and we, I mean, our, our first anniversary, I was seven months pregnant and we had, you know, we got married in 78 and had babies in 79, 80, You and guys did not mess around. <laughs> well, actually we did. That was, <laughs> yeah, <so bad. laughs> they were messing so, around, which is why. Anyway, I was home with these three little ones, you know, and he was busy out doing stuff, but with, but I mean, I understood it. And, but it was a hard, that was hard because he wasn't always able to do, be, be there with the kids as much. And. It was back in the day when pastors, you know, the, my generation of pastors, you actually worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you worked a 60, 70, 80 hour week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then you, you couldn't ask get, chat GPT to write your sermon for you. No, and he was in school too. He was in seminary. So he was going to school and doing all this stuff and. But I mean, fortunately, we had, you know, we had, um, we often had somebody living with us and like a young gal that needed a place to stay and all that. And, and so that was very helpful. And so I had other adults. Yeah. yeah. It was a good kind of tired. But then he would be more f- available during the day sometimes too. So that was mm-hmm. good. Though I was working full time most of that time too. So in all these years, wow. you, it, it sounds like you had an, amazing experience there was never a period of burnout over all the years i feel like there's a pressure to perform like i i have a good imagination i can't imagine being a pastor's wife and i don't think i'll ever have to but technology (laughs) is getting pretty good so you never know Uh, and i'm young enough so (laughs) i don't know what i'm talking about maybe stop talking Uh, but knowing several pastor's wives and just just the realities of you go to church on Sunday and you can't, you can't exactly, if you had a shitty week or whatever, you can't, you kind of have to put on the happy face and feels like there's a lot of pressure behind that. There was never burnout associated with that. For her? Yeah, for her and, and for you, but first the pastor's well, wife. yeah. Fortunately, we were in churches that, um, and when Art was youth pastor, say in Portland, we were in a church that there were two senior co-pastors and the pastor's wives um just they were very um very free with me to i I just i felt like i could just be real i could just be myself and i didn't have to exemplify that yeah yeah they did and we didn't you know i didn't feel so much like i was living in a fishbowl or anything i could just be 
people accepted me for who I was and and um and I just wanted to support him and I didn't I never really did a lot of ministry stuff I didn't mm -hmm. teach Sunday school that much or any that kind of thing yeah. I mean I was you know I worked full time and but I just was there to support him and which is interesting cuz sometimes I feel like it's an unspoken expectation of the well there's a lot of unspoken expectations i think of pastors wives and one of those is well are you participating in the ministry or are, are you leading the women's ministry are you teaching on like are you doing are you doing the job for free <laughs> effectively did mm -hmm. we hire one and a half people right did you ever yeah. but it sounds like you didn't ever really at least in, it, feel those things or if you did that they they weren't so much that they would you would feel guilt into action no i was i was often when we would go to a new church and they were considering us to you know art considering art to be the new pastor or whatever they'd ask me you know well what would what, what, how do you see your role yeah and i would just say just support him i'm you know i'm not i'm not seminary trained or any of that and um I, I mean, I love the Lord, and I'm going to be here to support the church and sure. my husband. And, and she genuinely loves the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, there was a season where I was working for our denomination, and I wasn't a pastor of a local church. Those weren't the best five years for her. Mm. You know, she missed that kind of connection with the church and just working behind the scenes and serving and serving. So it was never this... Um, for as I perceive it, for Brenda, there was mm -hmm. for me, but never for Brenda really seasons where she felt like she was contending with the church mm. and the role and all that kind of stuff. She loved the church. She likes it when we were in a pastoral role. And yeah. it's genuine. It's heartfelt. Um, and when she talks about supporting me, uh, it's you know it wasn't like just shut up and cook my dinners kind of supporting me. It was she's feisty and <laughs> honest, but just um yeah really supportive in the most helpful ways because sometimes supporting me is come here have you have you looked at it from this perspective mm. or that person probably didn't mean what you think mm. that might not be the art, lord speaking to you Art, i think that's what i was getting to seeing that healthy pushback you say feisty but it's like a, a woman that will stand toe to toe with you and hold you accountable and and uh i mean accountability seems to be a big thing between your husband and wife. It's a huge thing. Mm. I mean, do you do you? I mean, do you agree that that's what your wife does for you? She keeps you accountable and she keeps you, you know, on on a path with her, as opposed to like, hey, where are you going there? Yeah, in her way, in a way that I can handle. <laughs> 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 well, I also am really sold on his gifts, and I and I, I mean. So I. So love you're also me. aware of my flaws. Oh, so I mean, we true. don't. Right. We're talking about gifts, and we both have them. Everybody mm -hmm. has them. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a part of uh, when I I said respect earlier, a key to a marriage. I think it's an overlooked thing, <clears throat> um, or at least it's not spoken of as much. Well, you have to be compatible. You yeah. have to be this or that for marriage. When you. If you don't develop over the years a true, deep respect for your spouse, mm -hmm. um, something that actually gets better as you get older and your body gets flabbier or whatever the, whatever the case may be, if, if respect isn't growing while all those other things are decaying, mm -hmm. you're, you're in trouble. What, we yeah, because what stay do you together. love with? Yeah, your love matures. That's a mature love. It's, a, it, it's respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's still romance. There's still deep feelings. You still get some butterflies every once in a while, but the other things don't matter uh, that much anymore. Yeah, because you have respect for each other. And when you have respect for each other, and that's not questioned, then you can do real pushback. Yeah, because I'm not threatened by it when she says you're being an idiot, or she hardly ever say something like that. But be nice, or she'll just sense it. Like I'm in a line. And I'm being impatient because I'm in a grocery store and I'm waiting in line to buy the bread or whatever it is. And they're chatting. They're chatting up there instead of chat. I, you, these, these people ought to get paid. 
by the number of people they process. This, this isn't a social club. I just want to buy my bread. I don't care about her kids. Let's move it. And I've actually verbally said, hey, let's go. Let's move it. We got things to do here in the grocery store. And when Brenda's with me, she'll sense it coming. So before the eruption happens, she'll reach over and grab my hand and squeeze it. Calm down. Be nice. It'll oh be God. okay. <laughs> Next time we'll go through the self-checkout. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a, a comical example. But when you're a pastor and you're dealing with people and, and, and they're hurting yeah. and they're doing dumb things, yeah, you can really do some damage by responding out of your insecurities, leading out of your insecurities. Mm-hmm. People get trashed when you lead out of your insecurities. Yeah. And to have a spouse that loves the church as much as you do or more and loves the people that you're serving, like we're serving them together, and she she helps me not wound people. Uh, when you have respect for each other, you can hear all that, and it's honest and it's real and it's true. And it's not always easy to hear. But, yeah. but yeah. When, when the respect goes both directions. Both ways, yeah. My, I say if there was a rule, if there was a rule that said, you have to lose yourself in one other human being. You have to totally melt into another human being. Which to- usually happens with age. You know, <laughs> everybody's body turns into a melted candle. Not turn into another human being, but melt your smell with another human being. I'd yeah. pick Brenda. Yeah. I'd pick Brenda over anybody else I know. And she drives me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife's opinion of me is the most important opinion for mm-hmm. me in the world. Mm-hmm. That it, it matters more than anybody else's. Mm-hmm. And in your best moments, not just to tell you what you want to hear. Because I feel like some the respect that you're describing, a healthy respect, I'm imagining there's a lot of, because of culture shifting, especially around some of the gender norms, uh, there's a lot, there's a resurgence <laughs> of sort of ha- hyper-masculine, ha- hyper-masculinity in the church and stuff like that, which I don't even know if it's gone away. I just see it more where for a lot of them, it seems like respect equals, I say what happens and you yeah. do what I say. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't sound like what you're <clears throat> describing. <clears throat> it did when I was 40. Right. There you go. Or in my twenties. Yeah. Get that mic a little closer. Bring it a little, there we go. Nice. Yeah, uh, both from um, encouragement and from criticism perspective, the her words matter more. I, I've, I can have Teflon mm-hmm. with other people, um, but but and th- that's maybe sometimes why like the criticisms especially can be extra difficult. They may be they may be well founded, <laughs> they may yeah. be accurate criticisms, but it's harder to hear from somebody that's that close to you sometimes. Yeah, and maybe I don't know if you guys have the the unofficial uh, idea of 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 the bank of of uh, where where are your deposits going? How many deposits in the encouragement uh, account versus the <laughs> criticism account mm-hmm. have been put in? But I don't know if we do that consciously. But no, uh, we certain the the value that's there. We we try to practice mm-hmm. more intuitively. Oh yeah. What do you think, Jeff? You're, well, you and I have talked about marriage a lot in the hot tubs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, Whoa! I think there. Wait t- a minute. Let's re- <laughs> so we'll edit that part. Something's weird with your camera. I by think the way. it's battery. I <laughs> yeah. think it's probably battery saver mode. That's all right. Keep going. Uh, I I think on, I think when, in regards to marriage and my wife and I um, confronting each other, it's something we need to we need to be better at, and maybe when we're 70 will be great. Um, I wish it would come faster, but it's, and I can feel when her, her tank is empty and, and unfortunately sometimes I don't act on it and that, you know, I have regret and, and uh, maybe it's the same. She's not here to answer, but I, you know, it's, it's a difficult balance. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't know where that, you know, I don't know where it, it, it it begins and ends. Um, you know, I just know that I love her, mm-hmm. and I, I'll. I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna make it through no matter what. I just. I want to be thriving more than anything um, in marriage, and sometimes I feel like we're in survival mode, just acting on instinct. 
like in a weird, maybe like some fight or flight going on where you're that maybe not that harsh sounding, but I don't know. You tell me. Well, I've said it before. Um, I think, and, 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 and Tanya knows, you know, she's, she's a much tougher, um, she doesn't come out with gloves on in, in arguments. Mm. Um, she comes out with, with fists, with words, um, and, and it's, that's hard for me to contend with. Um, but there's a, uh, comp, it's not, it's, it's not a compromise. It's, uh, okay, this, y- you, you fight differently than me and, um, it's worlds clashing, but in the end, it's like that is the person that I love, mm-hmm. and that's how that's how she is, and part of me actually loves that about her because I know that when it comes to challenges in our marriage, that she'll fight for us and she'll fight for our kids, mm-hmm. yep. mm-hmm. and she'll fight for our family. And she'll fight for our dog, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's part of why I love her is because she's a great she's a great fighter. Um, she has passion. Oh man, <laughs> she's got, and she's got uh, just to the ends of the earth passion for you know for us, for our family, and for for the life that we're living. So, Jeff, you remind me of a story. I was riding with my dad. Uh, we were working in the projects in San Francisco when I was early college. And um, so we'd drive from Santa Clara up to San Francisco every day. And um, I remember one of those conversations on the way up there, I said to my, he and my, my mom was a pistol. You know, she was a strong one. But boy, she loved him to death. And as a kid, I remember thinking, well, a woman shouldn't talk to a man like that, her man like that, you know, and. So I remember telling my dad, and I thought he was going to say, yeah, you get me, kid, or something like that. Yeah. I said, Dad, when I get married, I think I might have been 19 or 20. When I get married, I'm not going to marry a woman who fights with me and gives me grief all the time like Mom does to you. <laughs> and he said, are you kidding me? You ought to marry someone exactly like your mother. You should be <laughs> lucky and thank God every day if you find someone like your mother. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, because I know she's got some backbone. And if anything ever happened to me, Jeff, I could say verbatim what you just said. I know my family and my kids would be okay. Yeah. And then he wanted to know, why, do you want to you want to be bored all of your married life? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and yeah. I, that was a big turnaround moment for me because I thought my dad was going to high-five me for that. Yeah, yeah, she gives me too much grief. No, he was telling me in effect that he loved her more for it. Uh, and you're not... I mean, I haven't put my fist through any walls in the hallway because you frustrated <laughs> me. My dad did a couple of times. <laughs> but you got that. But you got, got that from your dad, and you. you I made... was meaning to take this wall out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to expand this room, so it's good. <laughs> Just getting started early. Thanks, honey. Uh, I'm, I'm. I have a wife with substance. She's a woman of substance. Yeah, sure. And, and she gets that. She has that biblical thing figured out. I think in a good, healthy way, not in a, it's in a doormat sort of way. That's not happening at all. What do you mean she has that biblical thing figured out? She understands how to love her man, but truly love her man. And she understands when it's time, when in this idea of mutual submission, when you're trying to be a healthy team, she yeah. knows when it's, she knows me. So she knows when to say that I, that's probably as far as I can push with him. It's not going to be healthy to go much further. And so she helps me succeed even in my bad moments. Uh, But it's not like I just say what we're going to do and she does it. She, she gives me good, healthy pushback. And so we, and, and don't get the, I don't, you've seen us. So, you know, it's not always, Oh, they're one of these perfect (laughs) little Christian book marriages. We're not, we're a comic book marriage. (laughs) (laughs) We did have that one getaway, and there were a couple times where I was like in the corner, "Mommy and Daddy are fighting." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was Hawaii, so it was tolerable. <laughs> yes, uh, Art and Brenda, I think you guys need a cocktail. <laughs> Art, you need a double. Yeah. Uh, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, hot tub time. But, but Art, what about for you, burnout? In all your years of a pastor, mm-hmm. have you experienced seasons of burnout? And if so, 
what are what are some healthy tips for all of the young pastors that might be listening? Honey, have I experienced? Is that even a strong enough statement? Um, Ooh, what's the right word if burnout isn't strong enough? No, it was it was serious, debilitating, dangerous clinical depression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so triggered by, or is that just something you've wrestled with throughout your life? You know, in retrospect, I realized, oh, this is kind. This this, this has been planted in me all along. Mm. The melancholy or thinking and wondering, but it wasn't the, the when I was a church planter. That work was so demanding, and I wasn't smart enough to know how to have boundaries. Yeah. And I was also trying to prove myself, so I'm not going to fail. Because if I fail, if I don't get this thing going, then I'm, um, you know, I'll be a failure. And I just was not mature enough to know how foolish that, that was. Um, but it resulted in me being unable to achieve the goals that I'd set myself for, for myself. That I thought were non-negotiables. They yeah. weren't, but I thought they were. And my reality and my non-negotiables were never going to be able to coexist. And so what happened, instead of me saying, then I'm going to loosen the non-negotiables. So I didn't think that was an option. So what actually broke was me. And, um, and so I, my quick answer would be, oh, the pastorate and church planning did that. But it didn't. I did that by not being wise enough and mature enough to realize I don't, I don't have to get this church up to this size or I don't have to do that. Uh, there are worse things than not accomplishing that. And what? then I snapped. So for several months, uh, I was had to be away from the church completely, and mm-hmm. my personality changed. I mean, it's it's still different. Um, when you s- talk about that a little bit. Describe what was going on when you say you you had Snapped. to be away from the church for a little bit. Like, yep. W- yep. what was happening there? What what did that look like? I was trying to figure out how to take my life. Without... But at the time, you're leading a church plant. It's his first first senior pastorate. First yeah. senior pastorate, and you're and, and it's a church plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. You went to the major and leagues. He was in, <laughs> right, yeah. right. And he was, he was how old were 30, we? Mid thirties. Yeah. Yeah. Good move. Wait, right geez. straight to the majors. Right out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> tart, tart. Um, and so, so you're doing those two things, and now mm-hmm. you need to go and have a conversation. I'm assuming with some leadership of the church that says, "Hey, guys, I need to take a break." No, I wasn't even smart enough to do that. So I was thinking, I'm not telling anybody about this. I'm just going to gut it out. And I don't, I don't know if I sh- even told you about it. No, I didn't at first. So my church chair who was a good friend, um, figured out that something was wrong yeah, and challenged me. And I finally talked to him. I said, but don't tell anybody. We'll work it out. And he said, you, you're crazy. He was the head of Youth for Christ in our area of, of Portland. And he said, you've got to tell, you've got to talk to Brenda, and you've got to get some help. We'll get you some help. Yeah. So at first I wasn't going to tell anybody. And then they said they wanted me to get some therapy. I'm not getting therapy. That's the same as admitting that you lost. Sicilians yeah. don't get therapy. Cursed forever. Y'all be <laughs> branded forever. You know, so just reeking with unhealthy insecurity, mm. trying to prove myself. Just so. And he grew up with this. Un-Christian. Just suck it up. Just live with it. You can suck deal it with up. it. Tough that old up. school. My parents were healthier than that. But so it wasn't. I won't but it was it. in the culture. It was just like embedded yeah, in the yeah. culture of just mm-hmm. like you're be a man. And it was in the church culture. Oh yeah, too. Mm-hmm. even more so. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Don't let Jesus down. But it was absolutely stupid and dangerous, and put my whole family at risk. Mm. When I look back on it. But it was a doctor, a friend who was a doctor that you saw that said you need to take time off. Yeah, time off. No, David Blessing. Mm-hmm. I went to this trusted physician. Um. Uh, that we knew from our the church that planted our church, and you no, know, he said you are so scarred, mm. you're you're done with the pastorate. Mm. You need to get away from the church, and you can never be a pastor again. I don't see you ever recovering. Whoa! Mm-hmm. And uh, and I said to him, that's not an option. Here's my thinking again. So it's yeah. not an option. I'm I have a calling that will not let me go. I wish I had a different calling. I wish I could sell shoes. <laughs> Anything. Any who would what 
idiot would ever want to be a pastor. This is like an impossible job. I yeah. still think. I still and, think that. <laughs> I confess. I think. Well, so. I, I don't think that way anymore. Uh, I only have a little seasoning of that. And yeah, yeah. It's it's tougher now than it's ever been. I think. Yeah. These days, really tougher now. The the challenge. Rabbit trail. It's okay. So so the challenges of of being a pastor are going up. The the challenges to be able to think to deal with some of the things culture's throwing at us without wounding people and to manage the differences of opinion theologically in the church. Some of them are radically right. Some of them are radically left, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever terminology you want to use. I agree with Zach. Those are unfortunate. You have to categorize people. But um, anyway, the, the, the theological, and intellectual, and cultural challenges are more, as complex as they've ever been and grown. Mm. Yeah. Uh, on the one hand. And then the commitment to formal theological training that can help you be a good enough thinker to know how to stay faithful to Scripture and still caring for people, which, by the way, is being faithful to Scripture. Mm. Um, the, the challenges are going up, and the preparation to meet those challenges is going down, and it's the church's fault because they're accepting pastors and leaders who are insufficiently trained, uh, and that's just a train wreck waiting to happen. Oof. And that was then it was hard to be a pastor. This yeah. is now it's even m more difficult. Yeah. So anyway, that have I had seasons of burnout? Burnout doesn't quite touch it. You were done. I was but done then... and wanting to be done. And I remember logically thinking, if I take my life and get out of this awful vacancy of any emotions, that's what depression felt like to me. It was like if... Like there was this big emotional syringe with nothing in it. And you put the needle in your heart and then you sucked everything out. All the emotions out. It wasn't just bad emotions. It was no emotions. Mm. It was deadness. Whoa. Uh, it was awful, awful mm. nightmare. Um, I thought, but I was healthy enough to say, if I take my life, that scars innocent people. My children... Mm. My wife, who's been good to me, she just doesn't deserve this, and my parents. Yeah. Because I love my parents. We both love my parents. Uh, I can't do that to them. But I remember Brenda being essential for me recovering because she, she was, come here, let's figure this out. I'll help you. What do you need from me? And how are you feeling? And it's okay. And uh, let's get you help. And Brenda, was that scary for you to see him like that? It was, and it was, um, he was supposed to take six months off work, I think, six months away from the church. And and they funded it. They paid <clears throat> me. And um, I think after three months, he started going back. It was part-time. but <clears throat> Against my doctor's recommendation, but mm -hmm. they, I couldn't stand it. They couldn't afford, anyway, go ahead. I interrupted you, I'm sorry. No, it was just, I mean, it was good for you to be able to take that time. Mm -hmm. um, but you, then you felt guilty about being away from the church. And so it, it was scary, but it was, you know, I mean, um, my faith is what got, us, got me through that. Had and you, I looked really good in my jeans. <laughs> And there was that. <laughs> had you been? You had that was a long curly, time ago, Art. That was a big old afro. <laughs> oh, when I see that photo or those photos of you, I'm like jealous. I wish that I could have that hair. <laughs> well, that, that was wait photos, a second. I'm jealous too. <laughs> Amazing. That was one of my rapid fire that I totally forgot, Brenda. What what cartoon character <laughs> did Art represent way way back when? Cartoon character. Oh or, boy. Or any. <laughs> Real oh, or fictional? Mr. I don't Conte. even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from Welcome Back, Cotter. But oh what? god, I know, yeah, I know you mean way back. Are we name? aging ourselves? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, way yeah, nobody anyway. knows what you're talking about. <laughs> I do, but we'll I can't with remember it. the name. No. We do. We know yeah. exactly what you're talking. You about. stole Mr. our music. Mr. Steal Cotter. our TV shows too. Oh, Mr. Cotter. <laughs> Mr. Cotter. Yeah. It was scary, but we were making progress together. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an excellent therapist mm. excellent not just some read these verses yeah you know really brilliant 
a psychologically <clears throat> tra- professionally trained therapist. Not a. Was Art, also, have you prayed about this? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you could have give it over God. to God. Have you given no. this all to Jesus? <laughs> no. Have you asked him to just take it away? So I went on meds. That really helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I just recently went b- back on a low dose of the med the, of uh, Prozac that I was on before. And because I was starting to feel a little bit of hmm, anxiety at night. Yeah. And I don't, I'm, I'm not ashamed. Of, I want to get this taken care of. I don't want to go back where I was. Uh, and then I had a great therapist and a super spouse. And I had, I, it actually worked out for good for me to rethink my faith. Mm. I said, wait a minute. What if, what if some of the expectations I have of God and some of the things I think I have to get done in the church for him to like me, yeah. be proud of me, and all, what if that's all bankrupt? And am I free to rethink that? And so, God, what's success really look like? What's I think I got it wrong. What do you What do you really need from me? And I began to believe the idea that I can't do anything to make him more proud of me or perform for him, which is an old tape. Everybody's yeah. heard that already, but I experienced it in a transformative way. And I now believe the depression was a gift. I don't want to go so far as to say God caused it, but it's okay with me if He did. Hmm. I don't. I don't necessarily go that far but it happened and he definitely used it and i wouldn't i like who i am better post Mm. because it happened than the guy i was before it happened Mm. does that make sense yeah yeah but i wouldn't want anyone to ever have to experience that it was a nightmare yeah and years later he wrote an article that was in our denominations magazine called the monster in my closet and it was about depression and how it yeah it sneaks its way out. It tries to get. It just gets that. to do whatever it wants and come on you whenever it wants to. And there's no reason. Because you look and you say, well, wait a minute. You have a great wife. You have a great family. You, you yeah. Know, you, you what do you got church. to complain about? Yeah. I said, that's not the point. This is like, it's like going to surgery and they put the anesthesia in. You can say, I don't want to fall asleep, but you're falling asleep because it just gets to tell you what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's not, not logical. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, that's that's so good. It it's such a life is complicated, and it sounds like it was a multi front war for you fighting depression. Like you mentioned the meds, you mentioned the counseling, which was probably like real world mm-hmm. counseling plus counseling. plus you know biblical perspective. Mm-hmm. I I had friends that went through marriage counseling, and they went to a biblical mar- marriage counselor, which it. I don't want to like create a straw man here, but the way he described it, it sounds like, well, what does the Bible say your role is? And what does the Bible say your role? And it's just like this cookie cutter, just do those things and your marriage is fixed. And it's, that's not the way life works. So the multifaceted approach to it, it seems like would be a, a handy bit of advice for somebody that s- might be like, oh, maybe maybe that's what's happening with me. Because it probably would, you probably miss a bunch of warning signs leading up to mm. the break. That <clears throat> next time, like obviously now you start to feel it now. You you're catching it ahead of time, maybe. Yeah, I'll, even tell, I'll tell my wife. I'm, I'll tell Brenda. I'm starting to I'm starting to feel a little anxiety at night, mm. but only at night. What do you think? You know, help me manage this. Or she's uh, like, you you know. The yeah. Dodgers pitching is weak. <laughs> weak. Weak. Turn the TV weak. off. <laughs> they don't even make it up to weak. Okay, that is that is one of the things that I, I think about when it comes to like the things that we deal with as 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 people um, and in marriage. Like you're talking about um, telling your wife, "Hey, I'm feeling this right now," and these are the things that are going to affect not me, just me but us. And, and so that's what I mean. You're, there's this trust that you're willing to just say, Hey, I, I'm, it's happening Mm -hmm. and I need help. I'm telling Mm -hmm. you because I need help. So those are the things that I'm like, if couples, okay, one of the questions would be like the glue that holds us together in Mm -hmm. marriage. Like, are you willing to just throw it all out there? And tell your spouse, 
this is not this is not good whatever it might be mm. i'm suffering the depression's coming or hey i've gone sideways and you know this uh alcoholism or pornography or um just the things that you str- that that a man struggles with or a wife that's like i just i feel like i'm lost in our marriage or whatever, but just coming to their spouse and be like i'm having difficulty yeah uh here and and it's like i think a lot of couples think i'm in this alone mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because I don't completely trust my spouse, or I just I feel too exposed. Yeah, but you do that. You do do step well, into it with your wife. Well, that's because yeah. I know that she can handle it. I mean, you have. To, it's really important mm. to. It's not. It's not just a one size fits all again, Zach. It's. I mean, you've got to know. Here's who my spouse is, and here's what he or she can handle. So within that context of being sensitive to them you share or how you share or what you share or don't share. It's sad when you can't just be unguarded. But so I say yes. And at the same time, uh, got to be sensitive to who it is and what it will do to their soul. If you share certain things in certain ways with them. So yeah, you got to customize it for your own marriage, yes. but that pr- marriage, but that principle has got to be there. I think. And also in the first year of our marriage, we started off with, we were in this small Bible study with, three other couples, and um, we did this book about communication, Key to Your Marriage, it was called. And each chapter was, you know, talking about having children, finances, uh, and communicating, talking, yeah. and and getting you to talk about things. And so you, you start off with this foundation of we can talk about stuff, and it's important to have a security in the fact that you can talk, and sure. that communication is 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 vital but i've got to to make my point again and jump onto what you just said uh i have a i have a spouse who's basically unsinkable so that's a huge asset for me yeah as a christian because there are times i can say to her yeah i need you to be my sister in christ right now and my best friend i'm struggling with this can you help me succeed and i've had i've told friends about i mean about everything and i've had friends i said um I said to them, they have asked me, how'd you get through this? Or how you do with this temptation? Or, uh, and I said, well, part of it is I could go to my wife and say, I need, I need help with this. And they've said to me, I could never tell my wife that it would crush her. It would ruin our marriage for her to think that I struggled with watching the wrong thing on the, uh, on the, on the computer or that for two days now I've been diving into pornographic or inappropriate stuff. And I said, well, I feel for you, brother, because I, when that stuff popped up the first time on my computer and I, hmm, you know, I had a second look, Mm -hmm. I went to Brenda and I said, this thing popped up on my computer and I actually looked at it a couple of times. I don't want to go there. Here's how you check what I have been watching because it was all new to us, you know, the computers and everything back then. Here's how you check what I've Mm -hmm. been watching. Help me succeed. Is it good to have your spouse be your accountability partner? It is for my spouse to be an accountability partner. Mm. Yeah, I th- but I, like I said, she's bulletproof. Yeah. But there are things that it needs to be man to man. She doesn't really get men, I don't think. <laughs> well, why are you she, laughing? She gets <laughs> this man, why but you? I don't think she gets everything about him. I'm like, she doesn't understand that a man <laughs> needs to have the garage. A man <laughs> needs control over the garage. You don't get to pick what happens in the garage. The garage is mine. She doesn't get the. the I don't the understand. I don't understand. Jimi Hendrix is going on the wall, whether you like <laughs> yeah, it or not. Right. And, and she there. will say, to me, like, "I thought you put Jimi Hendrix on the wall." And I will say, "You let me." <laughs> We're talking about a garage here. You don't let me. I just report to you what went up there. But no, you want storage everywhere <laughs> for all your little things to put flowers in. We don't need all those. We need one. Well, I'm glad we could undo all the progress we just made. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and do I get the fact that, you know, um, the Dodgers losing a game can ruin your whole week? You know, I, I mean, no, she doesn't know, get that. I don't, I don't, you know, and I think just turn the I got TV it down off and to walk only a week. <laughs> ruining a week. That's. Well, you better get more meds because when the Padres take oh, care of the Dodgers, <laughs> yeah, evil talk on the show. 
We all, it's okay. We show. all kind of have um, a thing to get to after this. Yeah. Because this, I feel like this is another, we could go another hour or two easily. One uh, of these, one of these days, not too long, <laughs> we will. Again. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we do a, serve, give a little justice to a couple of our people that have been doing feedback over the last few weeks. Um, okay. Oh, good. And we'll get, when we listen, I love this feedback. So, uh, oh, yeah. Nice. Art and Brendan, we've mentioned it before on, That's on good the feedback. podcast. One of the things that we've loved about being on YouTube is that it's really easy for our listeners to interact with us. And mm-hmm. before we were like, it was like begging and pleading, oh, hey, you know, leave a uh, ratings and reviews were the only way that people could send us mm-hmm. information other mm-hmm. than the voicemail that they would ignore. <laughs> so, uh, so we love being able to get these these comments and feedback. So, all right. So let's go with the top one here from Starfang Wanderer. This is in reference to a short I put out uh, on some of the upheaval in Texas that seems to be happening of pastors stepping down because of inappropriate relationships. There seems to be a lot of that going around, mm-hmm. and how why that might be a contributor to women leaving the church. And so Starfang Wanderer said, "Hey, if." If the churches are getting cleaned up, that's awesome. It should be a place of peace, community, and hope, right? I'm not religious, but abuse isn't okay in any situation. Happy for this community. I think so, she's talking about our community. Yes. Are she talking about our community or Starfang? She or he, whoever this, whoever Starfang is. Um, I, I don't have any other comments on that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Dave Millsap. Do you think a church's policy about women in leadership might be based on their understanding of Paul's letters to the churches? Sounds like they're trying to be biblical. Yeah, they are. And also the rub is lots of people who hold more egalitarian approaches are trying to be biblical as well. There's, Mm -hmm. it's a complicated issue that's less simple than it seems in the English translation. And I can just leave it there. As a professional Christian uh, art, how did you approach the the uh, concept of women in leadership in the church? Well, it's evolved. So when I was younger, yeah, really in, in an attempt to be biblical, I didn't like my position, but I felt the Bible forced me to say no women in leadership. Yeah. But I hated that position, but I thought, I don't get to pick and choose what the scripture says, and I think it forces me there. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to keep, I, to be honest, I was trying to find a way to have a different position biblically. But I finally got to the place uh, several years ago where I thought, no, I think I was actually wrong. But it was a thoughtful, um, I mean, I thought a lot about it, thoughtful in that sense, a uh, journey to where I thought, uh, no, I think you could probably argue it either way. But if it's only an equal argument biblically, which is why you have two sides trying both think are, they're biblical, then the most inclusive conclusion is probably the one I ought to take, the most inclusive. Mm-hmm. So if I'm wrong and, and limit w- women from leadership in the churches I serve, that's a pretty profound error. Yeah. So I think, I actually now think the argument's stronger in favor of women in leadership a little bit. The scale tilts that way. If you're only looking at texts, uh, and, it's, and it was incumbent upon me to know both arguments reasonably well. But I, my result, my, uh, my final thought was that if, if it's evil, if it's that close, I'd have take the most inclusive position. And it started out as a logical step, but it became uh, a firm. Theological step at the end. All right. Theological. Next one from <laughs> Mrs. Lisa Crater. I appreciate your conversation. Some feedback to consider. When you all are discussing conversations regarding gender roles slash men and women in leadership in church and outside of the church and such, it may be valuable to include a woman in the conversation because a lot gets missed. Woman in the conversation. (laughs) Touche. Friend of Lisa's. Yes, friend of Lisa's. She sounds articulate, smart, and hot. Articulate. 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 (laughs) She does. She sounds articulate. Well, we, no, everyone knows I'm not articulate. <laughs> that sounds like you're asking me to tickle my wife. Uh, get it? Get it? Art, yeah. get it? Tickle Art, it. Tickle it. <clears throat> okay. Brenda, uh, how has your reaction been to the idea of women in leadership in the church? And maybe how has that changed a little over the years? 
did it evolve like uh, arts? Um, it did. Yeah. When, I mean, you know, in the seventies, I was thinking, no women, you know, I mean, we were supposed to go to a wedding and I, and I found out that the pastor that was marrying doing the ceremony was a woman and i thought oh art's not gonna count for that he's gonna will it even <laughs> count <laughs> we can't are do they this. even married we can't do they're this. married with an asterisk <laughs> but no i mean women there have been many women in the bible that you know are gifted and and speak god's truth and you know um are trusted with bringing a message to people which was normally the duty of the man yeah or of a dude. No, just no. I am. You became a Christian in a church that said, you know, "That's only true." Men in leadership. That's true. So it was but, evolution. From yeah, there. right. I think about, um, for example, Beth Moore, an amazing woman teacher that I have learned a lot from, and I think she, you know, she was in this position where she had to be under a man, or she couldn't be over over men, and and. I mean, she's got such gifts, and it's it's sad. And I think that, like Art said, you have to be more. You have to be inclusive if 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 it's not cut and dry. Yeah, erring on the side of being more inclusive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, last one. Sure. Going with Cam Smith, not a bot. LOL, Cam. It's good to hear from you again, buddy. Wait. So we don't want this to be an echo chamber. Does this mean we can't burn the dissidents? What did I bring my pitchfork and torches for? Um, that was, was related. He? I think that's related to throwing your kids into the lion's den. Oh, oh sending your kids to public school. Yeah, yeah we had an episode about Ooh. sending your kids to public school. <laughs> I haven't listened to that one yet. Yeah, that's when was that? Uh, a month ago or so. Oh. Yeah, Two or three weeks. You need to be a more faithful I know, uh, I'm not listener. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Yes, we haven't received your tithe yet, uh, Art, <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> well, this, right. is, this has been a good, a great conversation. Love seeing you guys. Thank you for sharing uh, your life with us and your experience, um, and with our with our listeners as well too. I think there's lots for us to learn, all of us. I normally only get a chance to learn from one elder. Jeff is way older than me, um, but this time I got Wait. to learn from other other people that are my senior, but I really appreciate your, your input. We're even Jeff's seniors. Yeah. <laughs> even, even that's Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> I'm going to get Arts yeah. Walker. Oh, I, <laughs> hey, we love you guys. You've blessed our lives in so oh, yeah. many ways. Yeah. And so is your church. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. So for Jeff, Zach, Art, Brenda, I am Andy. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beers podcast. Grace, peace, peace. Cheers. cheers. Cheers, people. Did you say grace, peace, and beers? Cheers. I thought <laughs> you could enter. Yeah, you could swap them out. <laughs> now we go get a beer. It's after 12. I can't imagine being a pastor's wife, and I don't think I'll ever have to, but <laughs> technology is getting pretty good, so you never know. Uh, and I'm young enough. So. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe stop talking. Yeah.